Welcome back to Learning from the Core Practicals. This experiment we will be investigating neutralization. But let's look at the theory first before we do the experiment. What is neutralization? The reaction between an acid and an alkali is called neutralization. It produces salt and water. So here's an example of a neutralization reaction. HCl, which is um, hydrochloric acid, plus NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, reacts to form NaCl, sodium chloride, which is common salt, plus H2O, which is water. So HCl is our acid, hydrochloric acid, NaOH, sodium hydroxide, is our alkali. NaCl, sodium chloride, is our salt. And H2O is water. Now, the reason why water is produced is there are H plus hydrogen ions from the acid that react with OH minus hydroxide ions from the alkali and they react together to form water. So in every neutralization reaction, H plus ions react with OH minus ions to form water. H plus plus OH minus react to form H2O. So you can see that at the bottom here, the little white circle represents hydrogen ions and they react with the OH minus, the red circle is representing the oxygen with the hydrogen, so our hydroxide, and that forms H2O, the molecule on the right hand side, which is the red circle, which is our um, oxygen bonding with two hydrogens. So that's why water is formed in a neutralization reaction. And in this reaction, the products that are produced are neutral. What that means is they are pH 7. So you can see on the pH scale in the middle, everything from 0 to 6 is classed as acidic. Everything from 8 to 14 is classed as alkali. And anything that is pH 7 is classed as neutral. And because the products that are produced are neutral, that is why a neutralization reaction is called a neutralization reaction. At pH 7, the concentration of H plus and OH minus ions are the same. So when is neutralization useful in real life? We can take the science of neutralization and apply it to help us um, in lots of different common everyday examples. So let's take if you've had a sting by a bee or a sting by a wasp. Now, a bee sting is acidic. So in order to neutralize that bee sting, if you're stung by a bee, you need to add something that's alkali to neutralize that, to take away the pain from the acidic bee sting. So something you could use is bicarbonate of soda. So the acidic bee sting would be neutralized by the alkali bicarbonate of soda. Another um, alkali that you could find around your house could be soap or toothpaste. These things are all alkali. So if you add these alkali to the bee sting, it'll stop the sting from happening. Um, wasp stings, however, are alkali. So you would need to add an acid to neutralize this alkali. So what you could do is you could use vinegar, for example, because vinegar is acidic. So you would take the acidic vinegar and neutralize the alkali wasp sting. Another common example where neutralization is useful in real life is by adding lime to soil. Now this isn't lime as in the fruit. It's a substance um, called calcium carbonate, white powder that we call lime and calcium carbonate is alkali. We can use this to neutralize very acidic soil to help plants grow. So that's something that gardeners would commonly use. And the everyday example we're going to be investigating today 
is what happens if you have too much acid in your body. So if your body's, you've eaten something very acidic, then that can cause a lot of um, acid in your stomach and that's what can cause the feeling of heartburn or pains in your stomach or indigestion if you've eaten something that's too acidic. So what you can do is you can take indigestion remedies like Gaviscon. Other brands are also useful, I'm not advertising Gaviscon, but Gaviscon is um, alkaline. So what that Gaviscon does is, it, as it's alkali, it neutralizes the acid in your stomach. So the experiment today, what we are going to be doing, is investigating the effect of adding different indigestion remedies to the, um, and the effect of that on the pH of dilute hydrochloric acid. So we'll take an acid, we'll add different indigestion remedies to it, and we'll see what happens to the pH. So the independent variable, please remember in any experiment, there's always these different variables that you need to know. The independent variable, that is the variable that you change. What we're changing this in this experiment is the different indigestion remedies. We need to know the dependent variable. Remember, that's the variable that you measure. And what we're measuring here is the pH. Now there are different ways you can measure pH in a science classroom. You could use universal indicator, which changes color based on the pH, or you could use um, other indicator solutions, or you could use pH paper, which also changes color based on the pH. But this will only tell you the pH as a whole number. It won't tell you the pH to be more precise with a decimal place. So what we're going to be using today is a much more precise method. We're going to be using this pH probe or pH meter. And this is much more precise. That word is really important. Don't confuse it with the word reliable. And don't confuse it with the word accurate. It is more precise. It gives you a precise measurement to more decimal places. And our control variables in this experiment are everything else that we need to keep the same to make sure that they don't affect our results. So the volume of acid will need to stay the same, the concentration of acid, the type of acid, and the mass of indigestion remedy that we add each time. All of these variables will need to keep the same when we do the experiment. Okay, so we've got our three beakers ready here. We're going to test three different indigestion remedies, A, B and C. And we're going to be using an acid to see the effect of the indigestion remedy on the acid. So each one has to be exactly the same volume. So it's the same concentration of acid, 0.1 molar. And I'm going to pour 25 mils into our beaker ready for A. 25 mils for our beaker yeah. ready for B. And the same, you've guessed it, 25 mils same acid into beaker C. So if this was a question in your exam, you would mention that this was a control variable because we've used the same acid, the same concentration of acid, and the same volume of acid. Don't mention the word amount because you do not get a mark in your GCSE for mentioning the word amount. You need to give, be more specific. So you would say the same volume, the same concentration. Now we're going to measure the pH using our pH probe of A. So our pH before of our acid is, is dropped down really quickly and I'll just let it, it's kind of fluctuating. 1.6 
Oh, it's still going down, actually. Taking its time. It's still moving, so I'm just waiting and being patient. It's 1.34 is the pH of the acid in beaker A. Now I'm going to take this pH meter, I've recorded that, it's written down. My glamorous assistant is doing that for me just now. So 1.34 and I've popped it back into the water there, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one spatula of our indigestion remedy A. This experiment could be improved, we could be a little bit more accurate with this if we, instead of just using one spatula we could measure an exact mass. But let's just do it with one spatula and you might want to improve the experiment by measuring the exact mass each time. So we add in our indigestion remedy. It's got a cloudy white colour. I'm using a spatula there and remembering that's the one I've used for that one so we don't contaminate it. Uh, the reason why I've put my pH meter back in the water is to bring it back to seven. Also to make sure that there's no acid left on our pH probe to affect our results. So I'm going to pop it back into A now. Have a think, what do you expect to happen to the pH? We've had an acid, we've added an alkali. Remember, acidic is from 1 to 6, alkali is from 8 to 14. So what do you expect to happen? I'm just going to let it fluctuate a little bit. It's stuck now on 5.76. So our pH after is 5.76. And now what I'm going to do is pop it back in the water. And that's us done the first one for A. Okay, and you need to make sure that you write down your results as you go. So that's A done, we've done the first one. We're just gonna repeat the process for the other three um, indigestion remedies. So again, we want to measure the pH before to make sure that we're recording the change in pH because that is our dependent variable, the change in pH. And we'll be patient again, we'll let it drop, it is instantly dropping from seven, just above seven, that was our water. It's coming right down now to 1.5, 1.49. It should be similar to what we had before, 1.34. So it's still dropping. And you, when you come to do this yourself, you do just have to be patient and wait for it to reach the pH wait for it to um, steady, come to a steady number. Still, oh, there we go, it's starting to fluctuate. It's actually a little bit higher this time. I'm not really sure why, but that's okay because we're measuring the change in pH. So our pH this time, it is just fluctuating. Is it gonna drop any further? Still going there, one point. No, we are still dropping. False alarm, we're still dropping. There we go, so that's it at 1.34, which was the same as before, which we would expect. It was the same acid we used each time. Remember, that was our control variable. So I'm gonna take a new spatula so I don't contaminate, and I'm going to add one spatula full. We don't wanna heap it too much because it needs to be the same mass as last time. So the same size spatula 
Again, this could be improved by measuring the mass of indigestion remedy. So we've added it in. You can see that neutralization reaction happening there much faster. It's fizzing. You can see the gas being produced. So we've added our acids to our alkali. And you might be remembering back now, acid plus alkali gives you two things, salt and water. So that's what's being formed. That's the reaction that's happening in this beaker here in our neutralization reaction. I'm going to wait till the fizzing stops so we can see once the reaction is over. And I'm going to pop in my pH Pro back into our beaker and it's instantly gone much higher. It's gone up, back up to pH 6.65 we're at at the moment. It's still creeping. Six point six nine. Yeah, it's steady in there. Six point six nine is our pH, so it's almost neutral. Okay, it's almost reached neutral. It's increased the pH so much that it's almost neutral. I'm going to pop that back in. I'm remembering to make sure that my lab partner is recording those results, so we can come back and look at them later. And then we're going to do C, the final indigestion remedy. So, before I forget, I almost made a mistake there, I need to make sure I measure the pH before. So, I put it back in the water to make sure it doesn't affect our results. Put it back into C now to see what the pH of C is. Remember, it should be the same as all as the acid from the start point of all of them because it came from the same bottle, it was the same concentration and it's the same volume. So it should be about 1.34 and it is instantly going down now. 1.4 1.45 Still creeping down. 1.42 There we go, 1.34, and it's steadied there now. So I've waited till it stopped dropping, and it's steadied. So 1.34 was our starting pH. I'm popping it back into our beaker now of just distilled water to make sure that it doesn't affect our results later. I take one spatula full, try my best to keep it the same size spatula as before. It goes into our beaker. I can hear it fizzing. I can see there's some bubbles, but it's definitely not as fast a reaction as before. And giving it a little stir, you can see that it's starting to react. You can't see the solids in there anymore. And then finally, our last measurement. I'm gonna pop this back into our beaker. And it's dropped from about seven and it's resting there on one point three five. So that was our three indigestion remedies, A, B, and C. And what you would do is, I'm gonna pop that back there just in case we would want to repeat the experiment for some more reliable results. We could repeat it to see if we have a difference and could find an average. Um, but we're not going to do that today. And um, that might be something that you can do to improve in the classroom. But uh, um, we're gonna have a look at analyzing the results now. Okay, so here is our results. My lab partner was writing them down as I went along. I wasn't just doing it by myself. Um, so we can see here, I've written down the pH before. They all started at 1.34. We've recorded their pH after. 
all of them have increased in pH. So all of them have been effective in some way of making the solution less acidic. And that's what an indigestion remedy does. You want to increase the pH, you want to make it less acidic. You want to make sure that you're going from a low pH, an acidic pH, to a more alkali pH or up to neutral. And so we can see here, indigestion remedy A has increased the pH by 4.42, which is very good. And indigestion remedy C has increased it by 0.01, but the most effective remedy here was indigestion remedy B. It almost reached neutral. It brought it up by 5.35, and it almost reached neutral. It was almost a complete neutralization reaction. Um, and almost brought it up to pH 7. Okay, so that was the experiment. It was a really simple one to carry out yourself. There are different ways we could have improved it. We could have repeated it for each indigestion remedy and found an average change. And we could have measured the mass of the, um, of the um, indigestion remedy for a more reliable result. Um, but let's have a look at now at what type of questions you could possibly be asked in your exam about this. So, what are the reactants in the products in a neutralization reaction? So this is worth four marks. You need to tell me four things. What are the two ions that react together to form water in a neutralization reaction? And where do they come from? So that's worth four marks. Again, you need to mention four valuable points. Why is using a pH probe better than using an indicator solution or pH paper? Now you saw that in our experiment today. We used a pH probe. There was a very good reason why we did this. Can you remember why that was? Question four. Which indigestion remedy was the most effective in today's experiment and why? Okay, so there are four questions for you to try. Please pause the video, remember how many marks they're worth, and have a go at these questions yourself. Welcome back. Well done for giving it a go. Do not worry if you don't get it all right first time. You can play this back as many times as you want. You cannot be expected to get full marks in your exam the first time you try a question. It's about practicing and you will get it when it's time for your actual exam. So question one, what are the reactants and products in a neutralization reaction? So the reactants are the acid and the alkali. That's worth two marks. That's what goes into the reaction. And the products are salt and water. That's the two things that are produced in a neutralization reaction, salt and water. So that would get you four marks for mentioning those four things. Question two, what are the two ions that react together to form water in a neutralization reaction and where do they come from? So the first part of this question you might remember quite easily, the second part is a bit trickier. H plus is present and OH minus is present. So you get a mark for writing H plus ions or you could write hydrogen ions you get a mark for saying OH minus ions, or you could say hydroxide ions. But for your final two marks there, the H plus, the hydrogen, comes from the acid, and the OH minus, the hydroxide, comes from the alkali. Question three, why is using a pH probe better than using an indicator solution or pH paper? There is an important word you need to use there, and it is precise. It will give you a numerical reading to decimal places, which is a lot better than just seeing the colour from the indicator solution. Finally, question four. Which indigestion remedy was the most effective in today's experiment and why? Remember to give the reason why. It's ask that in the exam so you get an extra mark for explaining it. So the indigestion remedy, it was B. Indigestion remedy was B, was the most effective, and that's because it increased the pH the most. And that's what an indigestion remedy does. It makes um, a solution more 
alkali. We don't want it to be as acidic anymore, so the indigestion remedy increases the pH and makes it more alkali. Well done for listening to the whole video and answering the questions. Feel free to watch it back as many times as you need to for your revision. And also feel free to watch any of the other videos on the school's YouTube channel.